For those of you who watched my first video, how to create a plaid design in Illustrator, this is part two. So this is a lesson on how to recolor the plaid patterns that you create in Illustrator. So really great merchandising lesson um, for when you design pattern fabric. You always wanna do maybe some a few recolors of it to give the customer more variety of selection of that pattern. So um, I we left off here in the video one where you created a plaid design and you put it in a five by five um, inch square fabric. This is now gonna be referred to as our fabric swatch that's in repeat. So um, once you have that and you have a colorway that you like, or if you don't, you can always recolor it. And I can see my second recolor of that same exact plaid is over here. And what I did is I used something called the recolor artwork tool. Um, and to find that, basically, um, you have to first take the black arrow, select your plaid, um, and you will see it highlight in your fill box. And then as long as your window control panel has the little check mark next to it, you will see something right here called, looks like a real wheel, like a gradient gray color wheel in the center um, of your control panel. And you can see I highlighted here in the screenshot image. It's, this is the recolor artwork tool. So as long as you select a pattern to recolor, so that's really important, you have to select a pattern to recolor first with the black arrow, then you can go up to the recolor artwork tool and then skip by past this, this window. This is a newer window to Adobe Illustrator 2021 version. Um, you go straight down to advanced options. This is where I want you to focus your attention on. I want you to focus your attention on this box. This is the recolor artwork box. So I wanna talk about this for a second. So first thing first, I want you to make sure that in this box at the bottom left-hand corner, you have recolor artwork with a check mark next to it. So if you don't, it's an empty square, click on it and check mark will appear. Always make sure that has a check mark on it. The next part I wanna talk about is these long strips of color and the small chips of color that are next to it. So in the recolor artwork box, when you're working on any textile design or any body CAD that has a pattern fill in it, or even a solid color body CAD that has a pattern, well, actually, it would have to have a pattern fill in it in order to recolor these different colors. But anything, body CAD, fabric swatch, whatever you're working on, you wanna recolor it under a recolor art box. But these little square chips under the word new, this is what you double click on and recolor with. You never double click on these long strips of color under current colors. You leave those alone and you only focus on double clicking on these little chips of color right here. So if you double click on um, any one of these, so double click, you can pick colors in the color picker window. And we've looked at this before in my students that take my class, you can scroll across the bar up cut rainbows of color. And then wherever you place the circle in that you inside all those hues, different hues from light to dark of that you know, red color hue is where, once you hit okay, is what your pattern's gonna recolor to. So let me just do that. And you can see that in live time, because I have recolor artwork um, box checked, I can actually see side by side what I'm doing when I recolor here and what it becomes over here. I'm gonna cancel this for one second. For my students that are doing the midterm project, what I want you to do is I want you to take your first swatch. If you like that colorway and you wanna show it as colorway one, then I want you to do a copy paste and I want you to copy paste the same exact plaid and I want you to turn it into a totally different color like I have here. I'm just going to pull that off to the side so I can show you the lesson. Um, so once you copy and paste it, so this would be your colorway one and this could have been the original colorway you created your plaid um, from. Then you're going to copy paste it and now you're going to recolor it into something else. So again, I'm going to recolor artwork box, art will wheel up here and then hit advanced options and now it takes me to this box. I want to be really conscious that you pull this recolor artwork box off to the side of whatever you're coloring. So um, because you want to be able to see it color in live time. So if it's overlapping, you're not going to be able to see what's happening. So make sure you pull it off to the side somewhere so you get to see the whole plaid um, being recolored at once. So now I'm just gonna double click on all these colors. And again, I move this color picker window away too so I can see what's happening. And you can just gonna pick random colors. You know, I'm just gonna play right now. I'm not gonna do the same colorway I have up here, but I'm just double click and then I'm just gonna scroll through and just play and just start to see what each one, oh, sorry, it, what each one is doing in the color picker window. As you pick a new color, you hit okay, and then you see it change over here. 
And for my students that have um, color swatches that they've uploaded a custom color palette, you won't go through the color picker window. You'll actually click on color swatches and whatever palette you have downloaded will show itself here. And if you wanna stay within that specific color palette, um, then you'll work within here and you'll select your colors through here instead of the color picker window. So that's an alternative for my students that are using a very tight defined color palette. But anybody that's using colors that you just want to randomly pick from the color picker window, you just double click and you hit in here, scroll the bar back and forth and pick your colors, hit OK. But again, if you're using the custom color palette that you uploaded in Windows Swatches, you go to Color Swatches and then you find your colors and you click on them in through here. So there's two ways, but either way, you're always coloring with these little double click on these swatches and you're picking um, from whatever palette you have. I will also let you know there's an there's a little scroll bar here so in case you wanted to change the hue of the color you chose to something a little bit more tonal you can use the um this this h stands for hue this s stands for saturation so how deep deeply the color is saturated you can see it gets a little lighter that yellow color gets lighter as i move along and then the b stands for um black I'm pretty sure it's like black to gray or whatever. So it's H, hue, S, saturation, B is like black tones, like how dark um, once you add a little bit more black into it. So these are my color chips. Double click on each one, recolor them either through the color picker window or color swatches. And then once you like what you see here, then you hit OK. And you can remember, you can always go back too. So you just double click, go back to recolor, hit advanced options. If you want to go back and say, you know what, I actually want to change that color again. And then you can change it again, right? So you keep on going back, you hit OK. Once you like it, hit cancel if you don't. So the goal of the lesson is to have, for my students that are doing our midterm project, the goal of our lesson is to have two of the same pattern swatches, two plaids of the same plaid. So not different plaid, the same exact plaid design in a second colorway um, that's totally opposite than the first colorway. So once we have that, and I feel good about these two colorways, this is gonna be my colorway one, this is gonna be my colorway two, and I feel like they look very distinctly different from each other. This has a little bit more warm tones, um, looks a little bit more autumn. This has got a little bit more cooler tones with lots of blues and purples and greens. So I feel like they've, they don't compete with each other um, you want to give the customer variety, that's really important. So you don't want to give two plaid colorways that look almost identical because then they're going to trade sales. Nobody's going to buy both, they're just going to buy one. So once you have the two colorways you like, now the thing that we need to do for our midterm assignment is you need to pull out, this is what the finished um, plaid lesson looks like. This is what our finished midterm assignment plaid um, lesson would be set up as in our template. You would have all your color chips that associate with the colors that make up each colorway of the plaid. So even if you're not working on a project um, in my class or if you're just watching this video as a public viewer, no matter what you do, if you design textile designs, you always have to supply the color chips that associate with that pattern. So a lot of times in the industry, we use something called Pantones, which is a color library that um, the fashion industry uses to pick colors from. But if you're just doing it randomly, um, you would have to provide the color chips itself and then you give them a name. And if you have a Pantone equivalent, you would type in the Pantone number. But for my students that are in my class, all I need is a color chip with every color that represents colorway one of the plaid, every color that represents color one, colorway two of the plaid, and then I want you to give them names to each colorway. Um, so in order to find those color chips that you just did, because remember, this is a fabric swatch. Now that you turn that pattern that you worked on originally into a fabric swatch, it's actually a flat swatch. It's not what it used to be when you first designed the plaid over here where you can actually pull apart stripes, right? It's not like that anymore. Um, it's actually a flat fabric swatch once you turn it into a plaid repeat through the object pattern make window that I showed in the video one. So in order to extract the colors out of this plaid, you need to actually find it under our window swatch panel. So let's go to window swatches. Here's our swatch box gonna pop up. And once I take my blacker and I click on my fabric swatch, it finds it right here in window swatches for me. See this little white box, it kind of highlights around that and it says, this is the plaid. Like I have a couple different plaids in here. 
This is the one that I just clicked on. It's right here in the window swatch panel. So all I need to do now is take my little cursor and click and drag that plaid out of window swatches. It actually still is there, you guys. It doesn't disappear, but you just, it's almost like you drag it out and makes a copy. And then what I want you to do is do an object ungroup because we're gonna make color chips. And in order to do color chips, we need to ungroup the two things that make up this plaid, which is the vertical stripes and the horizontal, right? So I want you to pull, if, if one of the um, stripe layouts is an, one with an opacity, like this one right here is the layer with the 44% opacity. The other stripe layer should have the 100% opacity. That's where you wanna pull your colors from, you guys. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create these little chips that are these squares. We're gonna use the rectangle box to do that. So again, we're gonna use only a fill color, no stroke. And you're gonna hold the shift key and you're just gonna create a box. It might start to fill it with plaid right away because remember you just were in the window swatch panel for a second. So it's gonna fill it with plaid. All you need to do is take the eyedropper tool now and I want you to eyedrop on the colors that you extracted from window swatches. So you pulled out your, your plaid and, and you pulled out to see the different stripes that made up the origin of that plaid just so you could pull color chips out of it. So all I'm doing is just um, create a little rectangle. I just create, I'll do it again. I just created a rectangle, um, use the rectangle tool. I held the shift key so I have a perfect square. I'm not gonna tell you how big these chips will be. Just be conscious of the artboard size that you're working in. We're working in 11 by, um, sorry, eight and a half by 11 letter size page. So if your swatch is this big, make sure you got room for the color chips underneath. And then you're just gonna take the color chip, take the eyedropper tool, eyedrop on the colors that make up that plaid, which came from that stripe that is off to the, the right hand side. And I'm gonna eyedrop on each one of them. And I'm just gonna go down the line and do that, right? So you can get the idea. I'm just kind of eye dropping until all the colors that are in that stripe that made up the plaid colorway one are represented. Like you see here, I have a brown, a khaki color, red, a blue, and a gray. And that's all that made up colorway one. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for colorway two. So I pull, I click on my um, colorway two with my black arrow and I find it highlighted in window swatches. I pull it out, right? And then I do an object on group. Oh, I locked it instead. Object on group. And then I'm just gonna pull, like you see here, I have pulled it apart. My opacity layer, I never take color chips from because remember that's le that's less than 100% true color. I'm always gonna pull the color, the color from the stripe that made up the plaid that's 100% opacity because that's my true color of my plaid. The opacity layer is only to show the effect of the crossing of, of the stripes, right? So it's not accurate for color. This is accurate for the color of the yarns that make up this fabric. So pull, once you do that, color, copy and paste all your chips. They should be one chip, copied and pasted over and over again. So they're all the same size chips. Um, so just keep copy and pasting, Command C, Command V, and then just pull all the colors that make up your, your uh, plaid in colorway two. And then, you know, once you have them all like I have here, just delete these real quick because I have them all already here. Once you have them all, then you have, you're gonna line them up and this is where you're gonna end up doing. So you're gonna line up all your plaids. Actually, let me go up here. All my color chips, I'm gonna highlight over all of them and I'm gonna do a window align because we wanna make sure we're pres presenting our work in a nice clean manner. Window align, I'm gonna go vertical line top so that all the chips are at the top level. And then I'm gonna just grab the five chips that make up colorway one plaid and I'm gonna do, um, distribute spacing between those so that everyone is evenly spaced as well. So under evenly distribute spacing, horizontal distribute space, that makes sure that all the white spacing in between each chip is the same, okay? And I'm gonna do these five so they have the same spacing in between. And then you're gonna also take the color chips and you're gonna do an object group and you're gonna do another align to the sides of the fabric swatch. So the side of the fabric swatch and the first color chip are gonna have a nice alignment. So you're gonna go under align objects, horizontal align left so that they're all nice and flush. And then don't forget guys, and do the same thing with the other colorway, don't forget to add our headers, right? So for anybody that's doing my midterm project, I want you to add a header using the text tool. So type out, click down and just type out whatever you're gonna say about the name of your collection. So I typed out um, autumn, you know, autumn spells 
plaid collection. Um, that was what I typed out as that's what I called my collection. I'm also gonna type out the word colorway one. I'm also gonna type out the word colorway two and put them directly above each plaid. And then I'm gonna have all my color chips nice and aligned to the side and to each other. And then I'm gonna type manually type in some custom color names that I came up with for each color. And then once you're done that, you wanna align your text too. So um, I have my color chips and my um, names of my colors uh, grouped already. So I'm gonna ungroup them real quick just because I wanna make sure, just make a mistake there so that we do a window align Here's my align box. We align all of our text to the top so they're all on one level for both um, the colorway one and colorway two names. And then once you're done that, you wanna do an object group over all your color chips and the names that make up colorway one and the same thing for colorway two. So we're just looking for a nice, perfectly aligned um, artboard with plaids that are nice and lined. You want to also make sure that your two plaids next to each other are aligned to the top. So colorway one and colorway two have a nice alignment across the top. And then you also have a nice alignment with your plaids and your color chips at the side. All your text is nice and aligned and you got your colorway one, colorway two aligned from each other. You can do a line top or a line bottom. And then you have your header at the top. And that just makes a nice clean presentation for any textile work that you're doing.